Hello, everybody, and welcome to another dose of virtual vitamin Z. My name is Brad. I'm an education specialist for the Detroit Zoological Society, and today I have a very exciting treat for you. We are starting a new segment called Brad at the Barn. Here I am, Brad, and you can see I'm at the barn. In each segment, we're going to be taking a deeper dive into some of the animals that call the barn home and learning a little bit more about some of these animals that oftentimes get overlooked. I know everyone's excited to see some polar bears and some tigers, but there are some amazing animals that live at the barn that we do not want to miss. So I'm not going to tell you who we are seeing today, but I'm going to go over some vocabulary words and you might get a hint of who we are going to be talking about. So the first vocabulary word we are going to be going over is bovine. Uh, and bovine is a way to describe a group of animals. Um, there are a, a subgroup called uh, the bovinae and describes medium to large size mammals. So picture a large mammal with cloven hooves. And if you don't know what cloven hoofs look like, they're, they're two-toed hoofs, hooves. So a hoof that's split in two. And then most of the animals in the bovine, at least one of the sexes have horns. So either males or females, usually one of them at least has horns. So think of a large mammal, two toes on a hoof and large uh, horns. And the other word we're gonna be learning about is cognition. And cognition uh, is a big word that kind of means it's the, the, the mental action of, of gaining knowledge um, through understanding, um, experiences and senses. So kind of how we gain knowledge. Um, the skills and concepts we're going to be working on today are sustainability, humane education, empathy, and reverence. So let's get to the barn. Um, we'll jump right in. You probably have an idea of maybe who we're going to see today. Um, if you guessed some sort of bovine, you are correct. We are going to see some members of the bovine family. We're actually going to see two bovines today. So think of an animal that's large with horns. Here is one of them. This is Novus. She is a yak. She's a domesticated yak. She was born in 1999 and then uh, came to the Detroit Zoo. So she's just about 20 years old. And domesticated yak um, are native to the Himala uh, Himalayan region. So think of Nepal, uh, Tibet, and they can be as far north as Mongolia and Siberia. Um, and here she is enjoying some nice breakfast. Our other bovine that we are gonna to meet today is Dozer, and he is a cattle or a domesticated cow. Um, and cows have all these different breeds, just like dogs, and Dozer is a belted Galloway. Belted Galloway, that's the type of breed he is. Um, and Dozer, he was born in 2008, and he arrived at the zoo in 2009 when he was a lot smaller. He wasn't a full-grown adult yet. And um, now he weighs 1,600 pounds, so he's a lot bigger now. Um, so a little bit about these two. Dozer, um, the, the animal care staff at the Detroit Zoo describe him as having a, a great personality. He's very friendly and playful. If you are out at the barn and you notice in Dozer's habitat a large brown ball, that is his favorite toy. Um, he likes to push that around. So if you see a large brown ball in there, that is Dozer's favorite toy. Um, and then a little fun fact about Novus is that she actually gets to go on uh, weekly walks. Um, you won't see Novus walking around the zoo when you are here, um, but in uh, the morning or after hours, she, the, she'll get to take a walk at least once a week to try to you know, stretch those legs out. Um, the two of them live in this habitat together and they both get um, a lot of browse. You can see them eating these leaves right here. Um, there's also grass in their habitat they can graze on. And a little bit later, you'll see Dozer eating some hay. So bovines, uh, like cattle and yaks, are herbivores. They eat a lot of different types of plants. Um, so you'll see them out there probably eating, eating a lot. Um, the two of them get along very well. Um, bovines are herd animals. They have social structures. So they get along well um, and they do enjoy each other's company. Um, and then some other fun facts kind of about them is uh, in the summer they actually will sometimes get sunscreen like humans because they can get sunburns just like us. Um, so on really really hot days um, keepers might put some sunscreen out there on them. Um, so that's a little bit about them individually. But let's talk a little bit about yaks and cattle in general. So I mentioned that yaks are native to um, some colder regions. So you notice Novus has some really long fur. 
really, really dense, long fur, um, a sturdy body um, and some pretty sturdy legs. She's kind of stout. Um, and that's because she's really well adapted to living in cold habitats. I mean, look at that fur, right? She looks like she could live in a cold Michigan winter. So she's, she's well adapted to being here. Um, domesticated yaks have been raised by humans for thousands of years um, and primarily raised um, for their milk, meat, and for labor. So people might utilize yaks to help them plow fields. Um, and another cool thing about yak um, is that actually their dry droppings can be used as fuel as well. And we'll notice Novus has horns and she's a female. So yaks, both males and females have horns, which brings me to Dozer, who you'll notice Dozer doesn't have any horns. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Brad, you said bovines have horns. I said usually, bovines usually have horns. Um, and remember, Dozer is a belted Galloway. That's a breed. If we think of breeds of dogs, people selectively bred certain traits in and out of the breed, right? So like Great Danes were bred to be very large. Belted Galloways were bred to have no horns. They bred that trait out of belted Galloways. But cattle in general, would have horns. Um, another thing that belted Galloways were bred uh, specific traits for was longer fur and coarse fur. So belted Galloways are well adapted to survive in cold climate climates and wet climates. So places that are cold and wet. They were originally bred in Scotland, which is similar weather to Michigan. So again, Dozer probably feels pretty right at home on a cold, wet winter day in Michigan. The other thing about belted Galloways uh, is that white belt around Dozer's belly. That's kind of how they get their name um, and how they get their nickname. Two of their nicknames, um, one is Belties for their belt. And the other one is the Oreo cookie cow because Dozer kind of looks like an Oreo, right? Um, and there's Dozer eating eating some, some hay. So that's a little bit about these two. You might see them both out in the barn um, next time on your visit. Take some time out to see them. You know, look for those um, those little things I was talking about. Also, Novus, I didn't mention it. She's kind of a picky eater. I know it didn't necessarily look like it, um, but she can be she can be a little picky eater sometimes. So that's a little bit about Novus, and I want to talk a little bit more about Dozer though. So uh, Dozer's a picture of Dozer, and like I said, Dozer's a belted Galloway. So that's a breed of cow, and those uh, cows were originally bred for eating. People bred them for beef. Um, but I mentioned earlier that he has such a great personality that farmers will even milk belted Galloways or just keep belted Galloways as companion animals. So one of the things I want to talk about with Dozer um, is misconceptions that a lot of times people have about cows, right? A lot of times we don't maybe think about cows that much, or we have this misconception that we got at a young age that maybe cows aren't very intelligent, um, Maybe they're just here for, for human use, um, or like even worse, maybe they're just used as a, as a tool. But, but cattle have actually been shown to have very complex cognitive, um, emotional, and social characteristics. So they have a lot of really, really um, complex emotions. So one study showed for their um, social characteristics that they can form these really strong bonds in their herd. They're herd animals. Um, and in those herds, they can build these strong bonds and even develop the equivalent of best friendships, right? How we have best friends, cattle have been shown to develop that, that same strong bond. Another really unique thing about them is they can actually recognize individuals. So cattle can differentiate, you know, say their mom from their dad, a stranger from a familiar cattle. Um, so they can tell one another apart. And even cooler is they can tell apart animals from other species. So if you walked over to Dozer's habitat, Dozer would recognize you as, well, that's just a stranger, opposed to Dozer having the ability to recognize the zookeepers that take care of him. Um, so cattle, you know, they're, they're pretty intelligent when it comes to social structures, a lot like cats and dogs. Cats and dogs, right, they can recognize who are the people that take care of them, um, who are strangers, um, and cattle are just like that. They're very similar. They can recognize this and remember it. They have the ability to remember people that they like, you know, oh, this person feeds me, maybe somebody who didn't treat them that well. They have the ability to remember those things. Um, and then let's talk about their memory. So, you know, maybe there's this idea that nah, cows aren't that intelligent. Not true. One study found that cows can remember something like a complex puzzle 
for at least 30 days. So the study had a, a maze with food at one part of the maze, and the cow was able to remember where that food was placed in the maze up to 30 days. That's impressive. I don't know if I could remember, if I could memorize a maze, and then you show it to me 30 days later and find that food. So they do have uh, a, an ability to have a, a strong memory. Um, and then the last thing is that emotion. So cows have a strong um, and, and complex emotional structure. And we might not necessarily think of that, but one way we can actually tell cows emotions is through their ears. And if we think of another animal that does that, dogs, right? If we look at dogs, we can kind of tell if they're happy, if they're nervous, if they're sad. I think this next photo really shows a good example. I feel like I see Dozer and I can kind of see his emotion in this photo with his ears. Um, and this is just one way, right? So, so cows are complex animals with social structures similar to ours, right? We have hierarchies and, and friends and maybe enemies, not enemies, but people maybe we don't get along with as well. Um, and cows are very similar. So now that we've learned a little bit more about how Dozer might view the world and how he kind of sees the world, you might be wondering, okay, I see Brad, Dozer's pretty cool. I like cows, Cattle's, cattle are pretty cool. Um, but what can I do to help, right? What, how can I help people, animals, and the planet? Um, so you can make alternative food and drink choices. Um, so uh, a diet that is, um, maybe meat free or more vegetable heavy is beneficial. Um, you can even just try a meatless Monday or a dairy free Friday. Um, that can help animals like Dozer or Novus um, or even um, the planet. Sometimes a plant, a heavy plant-based diet is better for the environment as well. So, you know, you can try some of these alternative options. I actually have some oat milk right here and even this uh, alternative meat beyond beyond burger um, are different options for alternative food and drink choices but i know what you're thinking okay brad i don't know i've you know, i've never tried dairy free anything what what can i do you know i want to help out dozer and other animals in the environment you can make your own oat milk that's right you can make your own oat milk at home it's actually really easy you don't have to go to the grocery store and buy oat milk you don't have to do that you only need two ingredients that's it two ingredients water and rolled oats, that is all. So the next part of this, I'm actually going to turn this into a cooking show. That's right, never been done before. I am going to turn this into a cooking show. You can see my ingredients right here. We are gonna be making some oat milk today. So it's really, really easy. Like I said, two ingredients, super simple, water and oats. You have water at home, you might not have oats, um, but all you need are some rolled oats and some water. Half a cup of oats and two cups of water. You combine those into a blender and you're gonna blend for 30 to 45 seconds. I usually blend a little bit closer to 30 seconds because if you go too long, if you go past 45 seconds, it gets kind of a weird consistency. So you can play around with it, find that, that sweet spot that gives you the perfect consistency. Because this is a cooking show, I already blended my oat milk, right? We've already have it blended and ready to go. I didn't want to make you wait for 30 seconds. Once your oat milk is blended, so just your water and your oats, you'll take your blender out. And all you need to do is get a strainer, a fine mesh strainer, and a container that you're going to put your oat milk in. I'm just going to hold my strainer over it, and I'm going to strain this oat milk into it. just like that. And some of it's gonna gather, some of that pulp is gonna gather up. That's okay. Just let it go nice and slow. Rolled oats work the best for this. So steel cut is a little bit too thick. Um, instant oats, a little bit too, too strange of a consistency. So you're just gonna kind of go nice and slow through here. Let that keep going. Um, and then I just did water and oats, but you can really use anything um, to help flavor it. You can also use some maple syrup if you want to add some flavor, some vanilla, a little bit of sugar. And then you might be wondering, what can I use oat milk for? You can replace it for most dairy things. So for your cereal in the morning, you can use it in baking, 
And if it pools a little bit up here, that's okay. We just want to wait, let it slowly drip through there. This is all that oat pulp that's collecting. If you push it through, it'll get kind of that weird flavor. So we don't want to necessarily push it through, just strain it. Nice. Just like that. Good. All right. Next thing depends on how you like your oat milk. I don't really like mine super pulpy. So I like to strain it twice. If you like high pulp in your orange juice, maybe go for it. Maybe don't strain it at all. Maybe just drink your oat milk high pulp. That's up to you. Um, but I'll dump it back into my little vessel here. And I'll strain it one more time. Just like that. And this takes about five minutes and you can double this recipe if you want more. This will be, this will give you probably about two cups of oat milk. So if you want a little bit more, I originally used half a cup of uh, rolled oats and two cups of water. So if you want a little bit more, you wanna make enough maybe for the whole week, you can use a whole cup of oats and four cups of water. Awesome. Perfect. And just like that, you've got oat milk. Perfect. Just like that, ready to go. You can chill it. Mm -mm -mm. Delicious. Like I said, you can always add some maple syrup if you want, some vanilla to add some flavor, maybe a little bit of sugar. And that is my cooking show. Well, thank you guys so much for joining me today. I hope you guys learned a little bit about Dozer and Novus, and also how to make an alternative dairy option at your house. It's really, really easy. For more virtual vitamin Z, you can always visit our website at DetroitZoo.org. And otherwise, we will see you next time. Bye.